Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Dustin Carroll and I work at Moss Landing Marine Laboratories, which is part of San Jose State University. Thank you for viewing my talk today. Let's get started. Today I'll be presenting recent work on attribution of space-time variability in global ocean dissolved inorganic carbon. And this is currently a paper in revision at Global Biogeochemical Cycles. I want to stress that this exciting work is really made possible by the amazing scientific and technical team that contributes to this project. So on the left hand side, this video shows the temporal evolution of anthropogenic carbon reservoirs, with the blue line here showing the trajectory of the ocean sink. Now for our community, quantifying both the magnitude and the space-time variability of the ocean sink over multi-decadal timescales is really critical to gain a mechanistic understanding of the ocean DIC state and also the future trajectory of its sources and sinks. So in the work I'll be presenting today, we seek to address and improve our understanding of this problem by using the estimating the circulation of the climate and ocean, also known as ECHO, modeling framework. We have developed the NASA-funded ECHO Darwin model which is a global ocean biogeochemistry state estimate. Echo Darwin is based on the ECHO modeling framework, which assimilates satellite, which is shown here in green text in the schematic, and also in situ observations, which are shown in blue and red here. And this assimilation is done in a physically consistent property conserving manner, which means there are no spurious sources or sinks of physical and biogeochemical tracers. Echo Darwin also incorporates the MIT ecology model, which provides biogeochemistry and a realistic ecosystem that has five plankton and two zooplankton functional types. We optimize the physics, so the ocean circulation and tracers of Echo Darwin using the adjoint method, and the biogeochemistry and ecology are optimized using a Green's functions approach. And I want to stress that we are continually updating the Echo Darwin solution to span to near present. So this is an ongoing effort and new output from the model is made available as soon as it is ready. So using Echo Darwin, we have computed a data constrained three dimensional global ocean DIC budget. And the temporal evolution of DIC, which is shown here in the tendency term DDICDT is driven by contributions from advection, diffusion, biology, and air sea CO2 flux. And these processes uh, that are captured by the DIC budget in the model are shown in the schematic. Now the biology component, which is DIC bio, can be further decomposed into contributions from organic production, production of particulate inorganic carbon, dissolution of particulate inorganic carbon, and organic remineralization. We then compute 3D mass and concentration budgets across the global ocean. And we do this within the upper 100 meters and also the full depth ocean. And finally, we generate monthly mean fields from 1995 to 2018. So now that I've given a brief overview of Echo Darwin and the DIC budget method, I'm going to next focus on model data evaluation. So in panel A here, I'm showing a comparison of Echo Darwin and GLODAP V2 climatological DIC in the surface ocean. And this shows the general agreement between the model and observations in terms of representing the large scale patterns of DIC. In panel B below, I'm showing a comparison of GLODAP V2 vertical profiles, which are shown on the X axis, and the corresponding Echo Darwin values, which are shown on the Y axis. And these are taken at the same space-time locations. The colors show the density of the model data pairs. So the blue colors show more observations available. And you can see from the one-to-one -one line, which is shown as a dashed black line here, that the optimized Echo Darwin solution agrees very well with the GLODAP v2 observations um, across these five super biomes, which start in the Northern Hemisphere and span to the southern hemisphere. And in all five superbiomes, the R-square values are above 0.92. Now on the right-hand side figure here, I'm showing a comparison of Echo Darwin and GLODAP V2 climatological sections. So these are meridional sections taken in the 
Atlantic and also the Pacific Oceans, and you can see the general agreement between the vertical structure of DIC. And finally, the bottom figure shows a comparison of globally integrated air-sea CO2 flux from Jenna Carboscope, MPI, SOM, FFN, and Echo Darwin. And Echo Darwin generally captures uh, the magnitude and the trend of the global ocean carbon sink. So now that I've shown that Echo Darwin has skill in reproducing the observed ocean DIC state, I'm next going to focus on the climatological DIC budget results, which are vertically integrated in the upper 100 meters of the water column. So in the panels shown here, A through E, the red colors show an increase or a gain of DIC, and the blue colors show a decrease or a loss of DIC. So starting with panel A, which is the DIC tendency, we see that there's an increase of DIC in the tropics, the subtropics, and in the Southern Ocean. Net advection, which is shown in panel B below, is the sum of the horizontal and the vertical advective components. This shows an increase of DIC from equatorial upwelling and a loss of DIC, primarily in western boundary currents and their respective extensions. Net diffusion, which is shown in panel C, generally provides a gain of DIC in the global ocean. This term is most vigorous in western boundary current hotspots where there is a lot of vertical mixing. For air sea CO2 flux, shown in D, this causes a loss of DIC from outgassing in equatorial regions and also in select coastal zones, and a gain of DIC from CO2 uptake in subtropical and subpolar regions. And finally, net biology, which has the largest magnitude of all the budget terms here, is tightly coupled with physical processes, advection and diffusion as those processes transport vital nutrients into the euphotic zone and fuel upper ocean biological productivity. And finally, the time mean values for these budget terms from 1995 to 2018 uh, is shown in bold text on the left-hand side. So having shown the climatological results, we next move on to the Global Ocean DIC budget time series which are integrated in both the upper 100 meters, and that's shown in panels A and B on the left-hand side, and across the full ocean depth, which is shown in panels C and D on the right-hand side. So the top row, which is A and C, shows the DIC mass, and the bottom row shows the corresponding budget term time series. So over the 24-year model period, the upper 100 meters which is shown in panel A, gains roughly 8.1 petagrams of carbon, with interannual variability being driven primarily by ENSO. And this is visible in the time variability of the DIC tendency term, shown in panel B as a light blue line, which closely tracks net advection. Now the full depth of DIC pool, which is shown in C, gained 64 petagrams of carbon over 24 years, with the DIC tendency, shown below in D as a light blue line, very closely tracking the air-sea CO2 flux, which contributes roughly 2.6 petagrams of carbon per year. And note that when integrated across the full depth ocean, the advection and diffusion terms cancel as circulation just redistributes DIC and does not create sources or sinks globally. Okay, so next we're going to focus on the time mean patterns of the DIC budget terms. So this slide shows the blended patterns of DIC gain, which are in the top panel, and DIC loss, which are in the bottom panel, from circulation, which is shown as purple colors. And circulation consists of the sum of net advection and net diffusion. We are also showing air-sea CO2 flux, which is orange colors and net biology, which is green colors. And the color saturation shows the relative magnitude of each term. And each color has a transparency to it, so you can see the blended and stacked contributions in each model grid cell. So in terms of DIC gain, which is shown in the top panel, 
you can see that there's a strong increase of DIC in the equatorial and coastal regions that's driven by circulation. And this is primarily from the upwelling of DIC rich waters. There's also DIC gain from air sea CO2 flux. So that's the orange colors in the top panel. And this results from the uptake of carbon dioxide and is primarily concentrated in subtropical and some polar regions and also near the western boundary currents. In the bottom panel, the DIC loss is driven primarily by biological productivity, so the green colors, and also some contribution from CO2 outgassing in equatorial regions, which is strongest in the eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. Now in panel B on the right hand side, I'm showing the same results, but for the full depth ocean. And I want you to note that the air sea CO2 flux, the orange colors, is the same in both the upper 100 meters and the full depth ocean. So in terms of DIC gain, which is shown in the top panel of B, you can see that the circulation, the purple colors, is generally reduced due to substantial compensation between the advective and diffusive processes in the deep water column. Now biology provides a gain of DIC, so the green colors in the upper panel of B, and this is from deep remineralization and it's concentrated primarily in the subtropical regions. In the full depth ocean, DIC losses, which are the bottom panel in B, they result from circulation and they're substantial outside the equatorial regions. This highlights the large scale extra tropical divergence, so the downwelling, required to balance the equatorial convergence of DIC rich waters from upwelling. So to wrap up this talk, I'm going to focus on the DIC budget in the Pacific Ocean between 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north. So time is shown on the x-axis and latitude is shown on the y-axis. And the DIC budget here represents a zonal mean taken across the Pacific Ocean. For the DIC tendency term, which is shown as the large panel on the left-hand side, you can clearly see the influence of diverse ENSO events with El Niños causing a loss of DIC and La Nina is causing a subsequent rebounding gain of DIC. These signals tend to originate near the equator and are then advected polewards with the passage of time. The shaded vertical lines show the 1997, 1998, and also the 2015, 2016 ENSO events. Now in terms of the individual budget terms that comprise the DIC tendency, you can see that net advection is reduced. So the red colors transition to almost white or blue. And that is due to reduced upwelling uh, near the equator. And also during the strong El Ninos, such as 1997, you can see that this term actually becomes negative. So the circulation produces a loss of DIC. You can also see a corresponding decrease in the air sea CO2 flux panel, which is below and also in the net biology. In summary, we have computed and evaluated the three-dimensional global ocean DIC budget from 1995 to 2018 using the data assimilative Echo Darwin Ocean Biogeochemistry State Estimate. Our results demonstrate that circulation provides the largest gain of DIC in the upper ocean with biological processes resulting in the largest DIC loss. Globally, we find that interannual variability in the DIC pool is driven primarily by ENSO signals in the equatorial regions, with the largest change of 2.1 petagrams of carbon obtained during the 1997 to 1998 ENSO event. And finally, we stress that all Echo Darwin model code and output is open source and is available online. And here are the links to the Echo Group website and also Echo Darwin model instructions, which are provided on GitHub, and also Echo Darwin output, which is provided on the Echo data portal. And with that, I will conclude. Thank you for your time. And if you're interested in this talk or collaborating or using Echo Darwin, please email me directly at dustin.carroll at sjsu.edu.